Tonight, I'll be making my way around the North Norfolk coastline to unearth not just some of the finest produce this county has to offer, but some of the finest producers. And trust me, once you get to know them, my food will taste even better. Coming up on the menu tonight, the Chroma Crustacean that due to the unique North Norfolk coastline is one of the most sought after seafood treats in the whole world. We whip up a seafood salad on Morstan Quay that costs nothing to prepare and can be on your plate in seconds. I get a sense of the Provence at Thornage Hall and out near Blickling it's all about the meaty treats to grace an end of summer barbecue. My restaurant is based in the heart of Norwich, but I'm beginning my mini odyssey 28 miles away towards the coastline in the beautiful Morstan Quay. So here we are, we're at Morstan Quay. To me, this is paradise. From the seal trips, to swimming in the quay, to the amazing sea vegetables. And you've got Sampha, you've got sea purslane, and you've got sea beets. Um, and I'm gonna go and pick some. So this is Morstan Quay, the most magical place for sea vegetables anywhere. It's almost Britain's larder of sea vegetables. And I'm lucky enough to have Ashley with me, my sous chef, who's already started picking some of the sea vegetables. Just down here, and we've got some sea beet, which is slightly leathery leaves, um, but can be blanched beautifully and just wilted in butter or a little bit of lemon juice. Ashley over here is now starting to pick some of the samphire. At the moment, it's still a little bit on the small side, um, but as it starts to get more and more heat into it, as the sun shines on it, it gets longer and longer. All these people are walking past, they have no idea of this plethora of, of vegetables that we're lucky enough to have. Right, Ash, I think we've got enough for our salad now. Should we go and make? Yep. Lovely, let's go. I love to Here we are in our makeshift kitchen. We're gonna cook something really simple from some amazing mackerel that me and Ashley went out last night, all night to get. Um, we were lucky enough to get two, um, which is just enough. Ashley hasn't slept for a day and a half, so we're good. Um, then we've got our lovely um, plethora of kind of all our beautiful sea vegetables that we're just gonna dress really simply um, and put it all together in this beautiful kind of melting pot of everything that is local to Morstan Key. So with our lovely fresh caught mackerel. Uh, we've just taken uh, the guts out of the inside, get the gory bit out of the way. Uh, all I'm now going to do is just fillet it. So the back here just goes straight through. All we're going to cook it with is a little bit of lime juice, um, salt, pepper and finish it with a little bit of olive oil and that's it. Um, so it's almost like a ceviche style uh, mackerel whereas when it's as fresh as it is you don't have to worry about cooking it and barbecuing and all this going on. This is the most simple and, and quickest way to cook it, which is so divine, and especially with the saltiness of all our lovely sea vegetables, it's going to be magical. In our bowl, we've just got some uh, garlic that we'll just put through the press and add in. And this is all raw, so all these amazing flavors are gonna really punch you in the face. So we're gonna add some salt in there as well. A little bit of pepper. We're gonna add a little bit of lime zest what I wanted to show you with this dish is how simple it is and how quick it is. And everything is free, essentially, apart from the garlic, the chili, and the lime, everything is free. So we've fished for the mackerel, we've caught the mackerel, we've gone out and picked our sea vegetables, and we're now gonna end up having this fantastic lunch from the bounty of our beautiful county. Lime, chili, garlic in here. We're just gonna put some lime juice as well. I feel a bit like Keith Floyd doing all this. So mackerel now goes in, in the bowl. And you haven't got too long before it starts to really cook the fish, so nice and quick. So like I say, the, the seasoning's in there, the lime, tiny bit of olive oil. So that mackerel now is just cooking in the acidity of that lime juice. So we'll just put that, reserve that over the side. And now we're gonna go on to our sea vegetables. We've got our samphire, 
um, which is the most amazing poor man's asparagus, um, my granddad always used to call it. Just cut them off. So we've just got the, the beautiful tender tips. We've got some of our sea beet as well, which is just a beautiful, slightly leathery leaf. Um, but then once, once we get our oil on there and our seasoning, that'll just break it down nicely. So we've got all our leaves in there. We've got all this to then take home. This is the great thing. I always remember with my granddad that we used to come to the beach, we used to come to Morston Quay, and we used to go out, pick all the samphire, and we'd go home, my nanny would pickle it, and then we'd have poached eggs with samphire and pickled samphire on top. And it was the highlight of my summer. Tiny, tiny bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Again, lime juice goes in, tiny bit of oil again. With this, you'll now see with the, the mackerel, how pale it is and that it's cooked. So that, that uh, lemon juice has done its work. The lemon juice and the salt has cooked the fish. So we're, we're happy to eat it, it's beautifully fresh. We know it's fresh because Ashley hasn't slept. So it's gonna be perfect. Just go on. Like so. This is Ashley's literally most favourite tea ever, isn't it, Ash? Do you love it? Love it. <laughs> it's like a reward and breakfast. We're just going to pop that on there. And then we'll just pop some of these beautiful flowers and leaves on here. My wife, Katia, now grows all these in our garden and we get to use them all the time. And then got a beautiful, simple, quick salad of sea vegetables, North Sea mackerel and my wife's garden flowers. Simple. Just up the road is a seaside town that is the envy of the world for its seafood delicacies. The shell span of a chroma crab is just 115 millimetres. It's that size that ensures that that small crab is packed full of flavour. I've taken one of these little beauties back to the restaurant to prepare a mouth-watering crab ravioli. So this is our beautiful chroma crab and I'll just show you this has been boiled for 17 minutes in boiling water with a little bit of root vegetables and white wine um, and all we're going to do now is break it up. It's just snap it backwards and to get the main bits of the meat out because people shouldn't be afraid of a beautiful crab. So thumbs on the back and all you do is you push forward like so and you break up the crab. The only thing that you can't use on a crab is the dead man's fingers. And the, I don't know if your fingers are going to fall off if you eat them, um, but this is basically their filters where they breathe underwater and this is where all the bacteria and all the bad things kind of goes in there and it'll stay there to keep the crab fresh and keep it alive. Um, but if you eat them, you'll be sick for a week. So as you can see with Ashley, what he's doing there is just cracking the shell enough to expose the flesh without breaking it up too much. So whilst Ashley's finishing that off, I'm just going to finish the claws. So all we've done is we've got the whole claw there and we're just going to snap the claw backwards to break it up. So nice and simple at this point. And then just with the heel of a spoon, always using the heel because um, it's a perfect size to get right in there and scoop out. And this is the bit that everybody normally gets quite nervous about. This is the hard claw. This is the one bit where you're gonna to have to give it some welly to get the meat out. With your heel of your knife, you give it a whack. Chroma crabs are still regarded as some of the best in the world, just because they're slightly smaller and their, their meat is a lot more sweeter. Um, it's not down really to the um, flint base that we have. When the sea goes out, you see all the flint and where they all kind of rest, and that makes their meat sweeter. Um, compared to the Cornish crabs, which are twice as big, their meat is a lot more fleshier, and there's it's almost a savoury, more fishier flavour to it. And that's why um, they're regarded as the best and they go all around the world. So that's now all in the bowl. And Ashley is now gonna to go to get the, the last little bits of meat, which is out of the body of the crab. And this is the bit that everybody forgets, but this is so much sweeter meat because it's just in there as a muscle that keeps working. Now this should never get wasted. This is like almost the pure gold of, in the restaurant world of the crab, because this is what we'll turn into the bisque, which is sometimes the sauce or can be a beautiful soup. Um, so nothing is wasted for this poor little crab that's now on our table. This just gets put in, roasted off, put into a stock with root vegetables um, and fresh herbs and boiled for about three hours. And you're left with this beautiful shellfish broth. Um, and then you reduce that right down to almost a glaze 
Refresh it with a little bit of double cream and you've got the most beautiful velvety soup or sauce. Um, so again, nothing is wasted. Well, that's the crab out of his shell. And now we're gonna turn it into something even more special. So now just to, we've got the white crab meat in the bowl there. Just gonna put a little bit of brown meat in there. All we're doing this to add a little bit more flavour and then just to bind the meat together to get a nice consistency mix to go into the ravioli. So just to finish the mix off, we're just going to put a little bit of lime zest in there and a tiny squeeze of lime juice. Give that a quick, good mix up. We're now going on to making the ravioli, but obviously for this point you need some pasta. So we've made it in advance um, and it's always best to make it, you know, 12 to 24 hours before. But it's a really simple recipe. So it's 500 grams of pasta flour, which is double O, which means it's a nice fine flour with just the right amount of gluten, 25 grams of salt, seven egg yolks and three whole eggs. And all we've got is a handful of parsley in there as well. And you just blend that, uh, pulse it in a robo coupe or into a light blender until you're then left with this beautiful kind of moist paste. Ravioli just goes into our boiling water. Um, no salt needed, because obviously of the shellfish. Um, and that'll just boil for about two minutes, two to three minutes, just to cook that pasta. And whilst that's going, Ashley's just gonna talk through our sauce. So our sauce, we've got um, a classic sauce verge. So we've got a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, some diced large vine tomatoes, a little bit of crushed white peppercorns, coriander seeds, and a little bit of garlic. And we're just going to serve it just warm. You don't want to heat it up because that will cook the tomatoes. You still want that light crunch of raw tomato, but just semi-warm. So this ravioli has been in the water now for about two minutes. Um, and you just see it's just that beautiful, vibrant green colour is what we want. You just nip around the edge just to make sure that pasta is cooked, which it is perfectly. Um, and then all we're going to do is just place that ravioli just on top of the tomatoes like that. And it's just a beautiful, simple dish that showcases the most amazing chroma crabs um, in a beautiful ravioli with that fresh richness of the tomatoes underneath. And there you have it, two amazing seafood dishes that will make any plate sing. And after the break, we'll be looking what Norfolk's larder has to offer for anyone looking for a meatier treat.